started a series on uh, the miracles of Jesus. We kind of laid some foundation. We're going to continue that tonight, and then we'll get into some scriptures. And the purpose of this message is because God wants to reset the church in our thinking and our heart and our mind, and knowing that he have not saved us just to be recipients. Jesus never focused, you never see nowhere in the scripture that his life on earth was about receiving anything. He came to give. He came to pour out. He came to release into the hearts and the minds of men. The hearts, mind, body, circumstances, and situation of men. Uh, the determination of God. And so therefore, that is the purpose of the church. And I, we can't do that if we don't know what God's will is. Then we just want to think God is pleased with us coming to church or being a being on, uh, having a prayer meeting or having a cell group, whatever the case may be. But if the kingdom of God is not being advanced and extended, it's all in vain. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. And Jesus said, even as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. So therefore, he sent us to do the exact same thing the Father has sent him to do. So this must become a reality. And uh, I believe that um, uh, our faith personally need to be restored or reset. Uh, if Jesus doesn't become a reality to me personally, it's going to be very difficult for me to be an instrument to make Jesus real in someone else's life. So we need a move of God. We need to me, a baptism, a Pentecost baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and when I say baptism, uh, Pentecost baptism, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. Tongues is great. That's wonderful. But how has tongues benefited even the people that is filled with the Spirit of God? How has it benefited us? That's, that's, um, we need, the church, we just need to stop and just think. We'll just... We just doing these spiritual wheelies and and nothing is happening we're not experiencing anything but we're going through the motion going through the motion aren't you tired don't don't haven't you said in your heart it got to be more to god than what i'm experiencing but but we keep on over and over year after year after year after year five years salvation ten years salvation and then we start feeling good that I've been saved five years, 10 years. But what is there any kind of evidence of the saving in my life? Have I experienced him in any kind of way? When I say experience him, everybody want these experiences. Everybody want these experiences is going to heaven. We want the experience of our eyes being open, seeing angels. My God, what is wrong with us, the church? We want all these experiences encounter, but we don't want him. We have not experienced him as someone that can change my mind, change my heart. I am changed because of Jesus. I don't think the same. I don't operate the same. I don't get as angry as I used to. I don't want to kill somebody because they do me wrong. Your life has changed because of him. So we, we go through all of this, this religious exercises 
and everything we must be pleased with it. We pleased with praying with no results. God don't does God think about it. How many that is listening to me tonight? You ever prayed and God answered your prayer? That right there, if He have answered your prayer, that should cause you to be thrilled and joy that that man God heard me and to continue to pursue Him. But we satisfied with other people praying for us and getting results. That shouldn't be the result of a Christian. Jesus, uh, uh, he did not really minister to religious leaders. They came to him. Some got healed, whatever the case may be. But we need to stop and think. How in the world, you ever thought about this? I'm born again, right? You're born again. And God bringing us some excellent scriptures on the prayer line. You need to join us on the prayer line. He spoke a word to us on Sunday. He brought out the scripture through the worship uh, through Dr. Jones in 1 John chapter 4, verse uh, 17, part B. As he is, so am I. We are satisfied with quoting that scripture. But how many of us will make the adjustment in our heart and our thinking and pursue the reality of that? I, you really don't even have to pursue it. Just simply make a decision. I'm going to believe that. I think that's another thing. We pursue and pursue and pursue. For what? Just make a decision. I'm going to believe it. And then just begin to walk in it. Not expecting any kind of manifestation. But again, the manifestation come. But I'm walking in the revelation, the reality of what he said. I trust you what you said. As your son is, so am I right now in this world. That's every born again believer. So therefore, let's stop and think as he is so am i right now in this world but the scripture says right okay is jesus omnipotent then are you omnipotent see you see nobody we got one said yeah that ain't right is jesus omniscient he knows everything, all knowledge, all knowing. Are you all knowing? See, we're going to say all the right stuff now since you, you know where we're going. Is Jesus omnipresent? Are you omnipresent? See, we're going to say the right thing. So, watch this right there. We say the right thing that we really believe what we're saying, though. Do we really believe that you, because the scripture, as he is, so am I the scripture says so therefore if he's omnipotent i must be omnipotent if he's omniscient i must be omniscient watch this right here we gave the scripture that in the book of colossians chapter one i believe chapter one or chapter two that says uh, that the god it was it, it pleased the father that in christ all fullness dwell even the godhead the Godhead dwells in Christ. And he turns around the scripture and says, and the Godhead is in us. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in me. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is in me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in you. Now, let me ask you a question. Have God ever allowed himself to get out of character when opposition comes? Why wouldn't he get out of character? Because for what? He's God. He's the creator of all things. So anything that comes against him, what could it do against God? What can it do? What can anything, anything that comes against, what can it do against God, the one that created everything? If Satan comes against God, what could Satan do against God? <laughs> Who created him before he became Satan? Nothing. So therefore, as he is, so am I. As he is, so are you. So when opposition faces you and I, whatever the case may be, why do we get disturbed? Perturbed. Because once again, once again, it's not real to us. It's real, but it's not real to us. You know why? Because it's real, we just haven't ever experienced it. And why haven't we experienced it? We have blocked it. It's not God's fault. 
it's not Jesus' fault. It's not the Holy Spirit's fault. In, in your prayer life, it's not going to change you. I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to fast and pray. And, and, and then I'm going to walk in this omnipotence, omniscient, omnipresent. It don't work that way. And to me, the missing ingredient is what the Lord spoke this morning in our prayer life and on Sunday morning, Sunday morning's message. Ladies and gentlemen, until you and I come to the place, there's a little book out. You are, probably every Christian that's at least five years old or more. This is an old, older book uh, by Brother Lawrence called Practicing the Presence. It's a little book. People probably read it but never practiced it. To me, that's the case. That, that's the case. Because when you practice the presence, in other words, you're practicing living in a conscious awareness of him. If I'm living in a conscious awareness of him, it's impossible for me to live in a conscious awareness of me. That's what has blocked omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence in us. We are too self-conscious. We are too self-conscious. What is happening to me? What somebody says about me? How, how could you manipulate me? How could you give my raise to somebody else uh, and I deserve this raise? I deserve. That's the greatest block. Not Satan, not demons. Anything is self-consciousness. Satan is a master to get you to become conscious of yourself. And not only is conscious of yourself, conscious of yourself and what you're getting ready to miss out on. Conscious of yourself, what you're getting ready to lose. Fearful, I'm going to lose something. And what do the scripture says in Job? What Job feared came upon him. He was self-conscious. Fear is self-conscious. You fear, fear is nothing but faith in reverse. So I, what he feared came upon him because he believed that he received. And he received. He had, rather, he got. He believed received. That's what fear is. Fear is you believe that you receive and you're going to have. Are you hearing the Holy Spirit tonight? So we're going to look at some principles tonight concerning the miracles of Jesus. How I mean, extraordinary miracles. We're going to take our time and go through the word of God concerning uh, the miracle flow uh, of the spirit of the living God. And let us kind of examine meditate on ministries that God has used in extraordinary miracles and even the things that God's done to me. Notice when he done things, what was the condition of the atmosphere? There was a presence and God manifested through the presence. Jesus lived in a daily 100% conscious awareness of the Father. He lived out of that union. He lived out of that intimacy with the Father. How can I bring presence, provoke the presence? I must live in it. I must be conscious of it. If I'm conscious of Jesus all day long and I stand before people, the moment you start talking, you're going to release the presence because I lived in a conscious awareness of him. And see, people think it's the religious spirit. Well, I'm working all day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I worked on a natural job and, and walked in this walked and living and being conscious aware of Jesus while I'm doing my work. John 15 become a reality. He said, without me, you are nothing. He's telling us right here in this scripture, without the Father, I am nothing. This is what Jesus said. Without the Father, I'm nothing. Without the Father, what can I do? He said, without me, what can you do? This is the beginning to help us to see how miracles was able to be made manifest. He says, I am able to do nothing from myself. 
independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught, but only as I am taught, but only as I am taught. We got, we had it great today. You want to know why? Because we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to show you how he was taught. What he did reveals to us how he was taught. Everything in Matthew, everything in Mark, Luke, and John, show, he's showing us how he was taught and how he was submitted to the Father and how the Father was able to express himself in him and through him. This is vital. He's resetting us. He's resetting us. This is, this is Christianity one-on-one. One-on-one. -on -one. Christ, this, is, this is what, now all this other stuff we've been doing. Now all this other stuff. This is Christianity. This is the fundamentals of Christianity. He's showing us. Right here. This is what it says. I am able to do nothing for myself independently of my own accord. Listen, if you will. But only as I am taught by God, only as I am taught by God, is the scripture true? Can it be broken? Can it be altered? Can it be changed? What we're reading right here, is it scripture? Okay. So, Jesus was taught, but we don't see him sitting in a classroom. We don't see him sitting in the classroom. He's trying to tell you and I, our subject in prayer this morning was apprenticeship. He's showing us, he's showing us everything that he did. We see written, he was being taught on the fly. He didn't have to sit in the class. All he had to do is, God said, do this. He just did it. He just, God said, do this. He did it. God said, go here. He went. He didn't say, well, there's snakes there. So opposition. No, no, no. He wasn't conscious of snakes, opposition. He was conscious of the Father, even though he faced opposition. And why he was so bold and courageous against the stripes and the Pharisees. Call them snakes and vipers. Because he knew they couldn't do anything to him unless they got permission from his father. That's got to be real to you and I. There's nothing that has transpired in my life and your life that God himself is not orchestrating. God uses Satan. Satan has to obey God. Did not Satan obey God with Job? Could, could the devil do anything against Job if God didn't permit it? No. He can do nothing against you unless God permit it. So you mean to tell me if I get challenged in my body, whatever the case may be, you mean to tell me God permit it? Well, let's look at it this way. We make it so difficult, okay? This is your life. You gave your life to God. Isn't that right? You gave your life to omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. You gave your life to the creator. There's nothing that was created that was not created by God of the word, the scripture says, which is Jesus, which is the God, which is God. This is your life. You gave it to him. You gave your life to omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. You gave your life to sovereignty. You gave your life to the creator, the heavens, the earth, the world, and all they that dwells therein. Then if you gave your life to him, who can snatch your life out of God's hand? Tell me who. Absolutely nobody. No human being, not Satan, not Prince Pastor, no powers. Okay, if that is true, my life belongs to him. And this is how the devil gets you. This is how the devil gets you and this is how the devil tricked you. This is the Your life belongs to him. And then God begin to allow your life to be touched. Why would God allow my life to be touched if my life is in his hand? The only reason that God will allow your life to be touched that is in his hand is because he's looking 
for total surrender from the life that is in his hands. Why is he looking for total surrender? Because you are no good to him and you're no good to your family. You're no good to people in your job. You're no good to humanity. You're no good to creation. You're no good to nobody if there's no surrender. Why? If there's no surrender, he, have, he don't have access. He don't have access to other people. He don't have access to the sun, the moon, the constellation. He have no access without surrender. So when he's touching, allowing this life that is in his hands to be touched, he's orchestrating it. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to get me to come to a place of total, 100% surrender. That's all, that's all he's trying to do. And some people surrender much quicker than others. A lot of us, man, we are master escape artists. Man, we'll wigger, I try to wigger ourselves out, out of, and know something, and once, this is a trick I was coming to. I know it had to be the Holy Spirit bringing back to my members. When he began to allow things to be touched, to get me for to, to totally surrender, what is usually the first response? What's the user first response? I've sinned. Absolutely. And I don't know why y'all go up to the corner. That's the first thing coming. Oh, y'all mild. Oh, I don't sin. Oh, my God. And you're trying to figure out what door did I open? When Job, God allowed Satan to attack Job, according to the scripture, was Job in sin? No, because the scripture clearly says, do you desire my servant Job that there's nobody like him on the earth who fears God and shuns evil? A shoe is that the King David Fred. Fears God and shuns evil. So the first thing that comes, the devil, the devil has brainwashed the church. We are brainwashed. And so therefore, when when something happened negative, the first thing, oh, I missed, I missed God. I must open up a door. Da, 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 whatever the case may be. I'm going to ask you a question. Is God bigger than your sin? The Bible says when sin abounds, what abounds? Grace much more, does much more abound. We don't believe the scripture. Other words, my grace is able to cover whatever sin you committed. So the devil can't get you because of sin. Because with sin of brown, grace does much more abound. If you ask me to forgive you, you're forgiven. So if you're forgiven, do Satan have access? How could he have access to your life and my life because of sin when we ask God to forgive us? And he's what? Faithful and just to do what? Forgive us and do what? Cleanse us from... If you're forgiven and cleansed, what, what, how, what kind of access? Do say to have? What kind of right? He have none. But we are jacked up because we don't believe. We don't believe. Are y'all hearing the Holy Spirit? So my life is in His hand. No devil can take my life out of God's hand. No devil can take your life out of God's hand. No demon, no devil, no man, no woman, no boy and girl. The only way how the devil gets us. Is through doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. Through what? Doubt and unbelief. Or ignorance. My people destroy for a like up, but we think we not have knowledge because we can quote scriptures. Oh, the devil's a master. Are you hearing the Holy Spirit up in here tonight? And so, if my life belongs to the Lord, so this is what we do. We think. I don't miss God in some kind of way. Then the second thing, the first thing is I must ascend. This is why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing. And the second thing is when your life is in the hand of God and you start experiencing certain attacks or certain things, what's the next step thing you do? You go into spiritual warfare. You enter the spiritual warfare. And you start binding devils and binding demons and don't even realize you're binding trying to bind God. So my question would be, 
all the hell that broke loose against Job. Listen to me, Bible scholars. I want y'all to search it out. I want you to read the book of Job when y'all get a chance. I want y'all to show me one scripture when he entered the spiritual warfare and, and blamed the devil of what he was at, going through. Could you, could you think of any time he blamed the devil? In, maybe, I, listen, I don't know everything. Maybe I missed it. Can anybody tell me? You, listen, we got some Bible scholars. Do, do anybody remember? reading Job and he, he said this is the devil this is demons this is that whatever the case may be then why are we always fighting the devil and with the problem with spiritual warfare is we're more devil and demon conscious than we're God conscious and that's why warfare don't work for the average Christian because we're devil conscious and demon conscious and when you're devil conscious and demon conscious, you're fighting the devil from a position of defeat. You're not fighting the devil from a position of victory. When Jesus, when Jesus cast out demons, ladies and gentlemen, he did not cast out demons being conscious of demons. He cast out demons by being conscious of his father. He lived in his presence. He lived in a conscious awareness of the father, not the demons. And so think about it. So by being, in a, being conscious of the father, when he said, I command you to come out, or he said, go, whatever the case may be, he was releasing the presence of the Father. He was releasing the dominion of the Father. He was releasing the authority of the Father. He was releasing the essence of the Father in that circumstance situation. That's why many times he didn't even have to speak. How y'all hearing the Holy Spirit? Why is the Lord bringing up uh, 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 coming this way tonight with us? Because he's resetting us. He's showing you and I Jesus, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. Ladies and gentlemen, he's showing us the pattern. All we got to do is just follow the pattern. That's, that's all we got to do. That's why we're going to be going through the miracles of Jesus. And as we're going through the miracles of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, now, let's just do the pattern. Now, watch it right here. He did nothing. Now, the scripture says, I am, I am able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord but only as I am what taught by God if I'm reading the scripture am I being taught by Jesus he was taught by God we are to be taught by Jesus so therefore when we read Matthew Mark Luke and John we say how the father taught him so my question would be when I read this Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and seeing how Jesus cast out a demon, how Jesus laid hands on the sick, how Jesus spoke to winds and storms, if I just do what he did, can it, would it work for me? Yes. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. It'll work for me if I'm living in the reality of this here. The reason it never worked for the majority of people because you really think you are casting the demon out. You really do. How, how do I know? Because you're wrestling with the devil for sun, some sunrise to sunset. Because you feel like a failure if the demon don't come out. What that re reveals? You believe you have the authority and the power. What you do, but why isn't it working? Because you are conscious of the demon and not conscious of Jesus, who is the authority and the power to cast the demon out. Why do I know? Because when you go lay hands on the sick, you're wrestling with that sick demon, that demon of infirmity, all day long. Well, my question would be, did Jesus rest with a, a demon all day long? Did, do we see in the scriptures that Jesus, let's say one minute, two minutes. Did Jesus rest with a demon one, two minutes? Now, only one time that we see, one time in the scripture, 
that we see Jesus repeat himself only one time. It's the man that was blind. He laid hands on the man. He said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. And then he did it again. And he saw clearly. That's the only time. Only time. Are, are, you, are you hearing the Holy Spirit? Amen. And that had nothing to do with Jesus. That had everything to do with that man's faith. Everything to do with what? The man's faith. Everything to do with the man's faith. So let's, 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 are, are you getting this? Listen, I want, listen, listen, I know this is the Holy Spirit talking to us. Because I really believe with my heart, my soul, we're getting ready to see a move of God like we have never seen before. I believe God's getting ready to pour out His Spirit like we have never seen before. But God is showing us how to prepare ourselves. How to prepare ourselves. Let's finish this up, if you will. He goes on to say, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. So he live strictly by the voice of the Lord. Strictly by the word of the Lord. Strictly by what God said, nothing else. He's not bringing his emotions. He's not bringing his feelings. He's not bringing nothing. Strictly, he lived for the will of the Father. Notice what it says here. Even as I hear, I judge. Even as I hear, I judge. This is vital. This is vital. Once again, when we get in arguments, it's impossible that you and I get in arguments and we hear his voice. Because the argument is, 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 is a confrontation of judgment. That's all the argument. It's a confrontation of judgment. I have decided you're wrong. And you have decided I'm wrong. So it's, it's, a, it's a battle of judgment. That means if there's a conflict, a battle of judgment, that means evidently I ain't, I'm not hearing the voice of God. And you're not hearing the voice of God. The devil don't kill two birds and one stone. Because when you hear the voice of God and you speak only what you have heard or you making a decision based on his decision, you ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to fight. You ain't got to do Just sit back and, and, and just look at everybody, cut a fool, whatever the case may be. Because the moment you speak, the decision that he have made, and you make the decision that he has made, or you have spoken the decision he has made, watch it come subject. Why is it going to come subject? Because it's not your decision. You, you only spoke his decision. His decision became your decision. And you spoke his decision in that circumstance or situation. And it got to obey. Because when you speak, it ain't your decision. It's the determination of heaven you just released it in the earth and wherever, wherever you released it, it got to come subject. But because people can't see Jesus and they can't see God, they see you and I. It comes subject to you and I, but they don't know what you spoke really when your word, it was his word that you released. Are you getting this? He says here, even as I hear, I judge. Even as I hear, I judge. Even as I hear, I judge. As a parent, I don't miss God. Because I allow my emotions, my feelings to get involved. Uh, when I see my children cutting up, getting out of the cabin, whatever the case may be. And I made a decision from my emotions. I made a decision from my flesh because I was upset and angry. Can you remember those days back in the day, Ebony? Can you remember that exit? Can you remember that e e e money? Yeah, they said, yeah, 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 sure. But they're they gonna be nice, you know. They don't wanna, they don't wanna uh, diss their daddy in, in, uh, in, in public, what the case may be. But I always go back and apologize when the conviction come. I always come back. I was sharing um, something with George and Letitia yesterday concerning Captain and I and how there's times when I made the wrong decision in discipline. And when I said wrong decision, how I spoke to my children. And my wife would say to me, 
privately. David, I think you handle that wrong. And if you're in tune with the Spirit of God, you know his voice. I was able to hear his voice. Yeah. You're right, that, 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 that's not God. And I called him to me. I miss God. With that is, no, no, he didn't handle the situation right. Will you forgive me? Yes, Lord. If I heard his voice and I made a decision based on his decision, I would have never had to apologize. Are, are you hearing the Holy Spirit? So, so I made, so, so here, I didn't wait till I heard his voice. That's what, how we get the devil to get us. We all stirred up, stirred up. I shared a principle and I learned from those you learn from your mistake. We should learn from a mistake. So, when my children ever did something, and many of you all, even right now, when God deal with me about you, I don't immediately come to you. This has been a lifestyle practice for me. And I learned this as a parent. I wait two to three days till my spirit is sunk. And there's times, even with my wife, there's times uh, uh, when God deal with me about her and I wait to the right timing because you can speak the right word out of timing and you just wasted words. That means uh, if I go and speak when God show me something and reveal something to me and my emotions all stir and I go, I'm going to speak out of the wrong spirit right word because God showed it to me the wrong spirit are you hearing the Holy Spirit and so that means uh, here is something from God that could not be received because I spoke it out of timing and I spoke it out of the right wrong spirit are you hearing the Holy Spirit so God knows when that person is see how much you and I I'm nothing but an instrument God wants everybody free God wants everybody to receive truth. So therefore, he's training us how to operate and move with God, move with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wait, and we may be in a car, we may be at a restaurant or something, going really good, and the Spirit of God will bring it back to my remembrance. When I'm not even thinking about it, I know it's the right time. And I just don't speak. I say, Holy Spirit, prepare a heart in my mouth. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Let her hear your voice. Because why? I'm not speaking to her for me. I'm speaking to her for him. You and I got to live this way with every human being on this planet. Every husband must live this way concerning his wife. Every father must live this way concerning his children. As I hear, I judge. Are y'all hearing the Holy Spirit today? This prepares you for God, and it prepares you to be a leader in the kingdom of God. You can't be a leader in the kingdom of God. You're going to hurt people and mess folks up. Are y'all hearing the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. He says, um, even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide. I decide as what? I am bidden to decide. In other words, you ain't making no decision on your own. I only decide as I'm bidden. If I'm not bidden to decide, I ain't making no judgment about nothing. I ain't, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not form. listen, listen to this. I'm not forming any kind of opinion. Wow. Does that not sound like a puppet? Yeah, that's what he's trying to be. He wants to be in control. And you want to, you fighting to lose control. And you will never, ever be anything for God because he don't have access. He can't give expression. He can't give expression. Wow. That's something else. You mean to tell me as a man of God, woman of God, a child of God, what God is actually saying here, I don't even have a right to form an opinion? No. I don't have a right to, no. If I have died to self, what is my opinion? What, what good is it? 
What good is forming an opinion outside of him? You see the, you, do y'all you, you see the fight? Us staying in control and being in control? Fighting not to lose control? Wow. Christianity 101, 101. Christianity 101. And we are struggling to be a Christian. We got sovereignty, omnipotence, but it could, there's no expression because I'm so much in the way. My opinions, and especially if God has touched you. Oh, God, talk to me. Oh, my God, this stuff. This stuff. Spiritual Christian. Listen, I made a statement this morning. The pursuit of spiritual thing is the most dead. It's not fighting to overcome a sin. What people don't understand in the church, the greatest sin, and you don't even realize it, is the pursuit of spiritual things. And you don't even realize it. And the devil got you going. And said, so you, you're pursuing to become great. You're pursuing to, to increase your prayer life. You're pursuing to be righteous. You're pursuing to be holy. Was Jesus righteous? Was Jesus holy? What did Jesus do to become righteous or holy? What? Surrender to the Father. It wasn't his righteousness. It wasn't his holiness. It was the Father's righteousness expressing itself through a vessel that was surrendered and yielded. Are we hearing the Holy Spirit up in here? Then says, speak, Lord. Your servant heareth. That's what it says here. As the voice come to me, so I give a decision. If the voice won't come to me, I don't make a decision. If the voice won't come, I do not make a determination. But if the voice come to me, I make a decision. And my judgment. Or decision is what decision is of judgment. And my judgment is right. Or my decision is right, just, and uh, righteous. Why? What makes it righteous? What makes my decision righteous? What makes my decision just? What makes my judgment just and righteous? Because I do not seek. I consult my own will. That's why I'm, that's why I'm in an argument. Because you're expressing your will. And another person expressing their will. That's what the argument is. You already made the decision, a judgment call about that person. You're this and you're that. And you know you this, you that. But what is God's decision? Well, I don't know what God's decision is. You know why? Because you didn't wait for the voice. You didn't wait to hear his decision about the matter. You didn't wait to hear his decision about your son, about your daughter. You didn't wait to hear his decision about your wife, about your husband. You didn't wait to hear his decision. His decision is his determination about the whole matter. What I think about it does not matter. What is his decision? Wow. Christianity 101. Sound like a lot of us need to get saved all over again, don't we? <laughs> That's what it says. Because I do not seek my seek or consult my own will, I have no desire. I have what? No desire to do what is pleasing to myself. Wow. Wow. Everybody probably said, save me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I do not seek my counsel, my own will. I have no desire. I have no desire. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself. Everyone that really want this relationship, everyone said, Father, give me the grace to have no desire to please myself. Give me the grace to hate, 
pleasing myself. I'm telling you, that's why omnipotence cannot manifest itself. Omniscience cannot manifest itself. Sovereignty cannot manifest itself. As he is, so am I. But nobody's seen it. You and I is not even experiencing it. As he is, so am I. But I sing it. I preach it. I teach it. I confess it. And I'm satisfied. How could you be satisfied teaching, preaching, and not experience that? Because that's the standard in the church today. You're not around anyone to provoke you. You're not around no one to provoke you. But you're hearing the Holy Spirit. He says here, I have no desire to, to do what is pleasing to myself. I have no desire, no desire to do what is my own aim, my own aim, my own purpose. I'm telling you, my God, I look at people that God has rescued over and over and over and over and over. And every time he rescues us, what we do, we go back into the same old vein. And we, don't, we can't stop and say, oh, wait a minute, God, you're talking to me. Yeah, but then I'm not hearing you. And then we, we don't we just stop and wait. And don't understand this hell that we put ourselves in because we're fighting against the grain. He's trying to speak to me. He's trying to show me. Why in the world are you constantly trying to establish your agenda why in the world are you constantly trying to establish your agenda you just cannot stop wait to hear the voice what is my agenda for your life what is my agenda you going on prophecies well, I got a prophecy 10 years ago. I got a prophecy five years ago. Da, 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 the case may be. A majority of prophecies, most likely, was a prophecy that spoke to the idols that was in your heart. Something you want. Not something that he want for you. Something you want to do. And the next thing you know, something, some catastrophic situation happened. Boom. And we get back up, we recover, and we go back in the same old vein. My God. You know what it reminds me of? What God said about the children of Israel. All of us has been there one time or another. He said, this people, <laughs> he said, this people always err in their heart. He said, this is a rebellious, stiff neck people. He probably said the same thing about us. We're so dull. He's constantly speaking, but we're so dull. We can't comprehend. We cannot perceive his speaking. And think about it. This is a fasting church. We do all this fasting, all this prayer, and we're still struggling to relinquish control of our that's what Jesus was talking to the disciples about in Mark chapter 9. He said, why we couldn't cast this demon out? Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. He said, why we could not cast this demon out? If we understand the principle here, look at the principle here. Jesus said, I myself can do nothing. I myself can do nothing of my own self. Then he said, why we could not cast the demon out? Because when they first started casting the demons, they was casting demons out under the authority of Jesus in relationship with Jesus. What shifted? It shifted when they focus shifted from him who gave them authority to themselves. And Jesus says the solution, this kind does not come out but by what? Prayer and fasting. So what we do, we go fast and we go pr pray so we can cast a demon out and not understand it. Prayer and fasting have everything to do with surrender and humility. 
for him to cast the demon out. <laughs> God, help us. He said, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Have anybody under the sign of my boy as a Christian have ever lived for the pleasure? Lady Cat's been listening to, um, uh, she sent me a couple of videos from, uh, YouTube videos from uh, Benny Hinn's son-in-law. Uh, married uh, his daughter. Uh, he had an encounter uh, with Benny Hinn when he was seven years old. He was sickly. And we heard about he was an orthodox uh, Greek and the same as Benny Hinn. And they heard about this, this healing preacher. They didn't, you know, weren't exposed to that. Make a long story short, got a miracle, prophesied to the boy when he came, told him this, this boy's gonna carry my anointing at seven years old. <laughs> and then God, uh, he had backslidden, and his brother, his brother ended up meeting Benny Hinn's other daughter and married the other daughter and said, Come uh, uh, and, and uh, um, uh, come something, I forgot. So he went there to meet his brother, and Benny Hinn saw him at his house, and, uh, and Benny Hinn said, um, he told him who he was. He said, oh, yeah, you know, I was wondering about you. Now, from seven years old. He said, and watch this right here. And then he said, you come to, you come to, uh, he said, no, what he said, when are you going to marry my daughter? So, you know, he's, uh, 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 uh. So, make a long story short. He said, um, I want you to be my assistant. And Ben and his daughter said, Daddy, don't put that on him. He said, uh-uh, don't put that on him. He got to pay bills. He got bills to pay. Because <laughs> she knew to be his assistant, he got to sell out. So he asked Ben and Hen, uh, uh, now Ben and Hen said, I'll give you 90 days. He said, uh, well, how much am I going to pay? He said, nothing. I said, I don't have no money to pay you. He said, well, after the 90 days, do you have it? He said, I don't know. I can't guarantee you anything. And he sold out that day. He sold out that day. And now that same grace and anointing on Benny Hinn, he's operating. hearing how this thing works oh god help us let's look at we got a couple of scripture here we're going to look at philippians chapter two everything we're not going to get into the scripture tonight on on, on miracles amen all this preparation because i'm trying to show you how it work do you want this relationship with jesus what the Father did through Jesus is ex the exact same thing Jesus want to do through you and I. Even as the Father sent him, even he want to send you and me. Are y'all hearing the Holy Spirit tonight? Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, the AMP version. This is not the classic, the AMP version. Now I got a, 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 a couple of... Um, uh, translation they don't have back there so I just read them tonight so the AMP version knows what Jesus says here in the word the scripture says concerning Jesus who although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes to my Jesus possessing what the fullness of the divine attributes and my question would be before we continue on do you possess the fullness of the divine attributes that's the question I'm asking you well if the scripture is true first John 4 17 B as he is so are we in this world we brought out the scripture in the prayer line in the book of Colossians um, that God determined that the fullness of the Godhead would dwell in Jesus in bodily form. 
And the scripture turns around and says in the same verse that um, the Godhead dwells in you and I. Okay? So that means the divine attributes of God dwells in me and the divine attributes of God dwells in every born again believer. Now watch the process, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to the process. It says here, as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity. Somebody said, I possess the entire nature of deity. Yes, you do. When Christ came in your life, the Godhead came in your life. The attributes of God came in. Because God is, God came in. His attributes came in. His nature came in. Is this scripture? Notice what it says. Did not regard equality with God. Wait a minute. Look at the process. He, he received the fullness as a, as, a, as a man, the full attributes of God. The full attributes, the entire nature of deity, but did not regard equality with God. A thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. Look at the principle. But he did what? But empty himself. Watch, stop. Watch, stop. Hold it. Let's, let's meditate on it. Let's look at it. I possess the divine attributes of God. All that God is, I have in me. You have in you. So therefore, if I possess these divine attributes, the divine nature, and um, I don't think it rather to be equal with God because God, I'm a son of God. You're a son of God. Is, that's why the scribes and the Pharisees went stone Jesus, remember? In the word of the Lord, they said, because he called himself the, a son of God, he makes himself equal with God. So therefore, every son of God is equal with God. Just like Jesus, equal with the Father, you and I are equal with Jesus and the Father. Because we're sons and daughters of the Most High God. You know what the scripture says, right? Are we sons? Are we born again? Are we children of God? Then we're equal with God. Okay. How did you? Look at the principle. But empty himself without renouncing or dis diminishing his deity but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality, uh, equity and his right, rightful dignity. He gave it up. Are y'all hearing this? He did what? Gave it up. By assuming the form of a bond servant. So here I am. We shooting for all these titles. I'm an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Is there anything greater than God? Is is is, is oh, God? God, God help us. We we in such a mess because this foolish religious demon in the church. We shooting for position and status and title. When you and I, ladies and gentlemen, we have been born again in deity. We got deity. God. Yeah, here in the Holy Spirit. He says, by assuming the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of a man, likeness of man, men, he became completely human, but was without what? Sin. Being fully God and fully man. Watch this right here. How in the world was God? able to express himself through Jesus he gave up his right he gave up the deity he gave it up please listen to me why would he give it up he's showing you a, a principle here a pattern all of us got deity in us but are you willing to surrender 
So what are you saying here? Until I'm willing to surrender my rights to anything, that is when he have total rights to me. He have total access to me. Now he is in charge and now he can express through me what I just gave up. Are, are you getting this? You see how the devil trick us? I'm fighting for my right. I'm the man of this house. Give it up and let the man become the man through you. You ain't gonna treat me the way that. Just give it up and let him be the wife through you. When you're fighting for your rights, you're resisting and closing the door for him to be able to give expression. Is it going to be your rights or his rights? Is it going to be your, your will or his will? Is it going to be your opinion or his? Is it going to be your judgment or his judgment? Is it going to be your power or his power? Oh, the wisdom of God. Do you not see? Here is a God in human form. Jesus don't think it's robbery to be equal with God because I possess the attributes of God. I possess deity. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to model before the church and model before humanity how heaven have access. I'm going to lay it, my deity down for God to express his deity in me and through me. I'm showing you the pattern before we start getting into teaching on the miracles. It should help us understand in a greater way how these miracles took place. There was no limitation. Are we hearing the Holy Spirit tonight? What did I leave off at? Let me see. Let, let me just go here. He says here, because I don't have this, the, the, the verse 7 here on there. Many pages there from these off websites. Many times they don't translate over. Notice what it says. It goes on to say, the entire nature of deity did not regard equality, uh, 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 equity, is that equality or equity? Equality with God, a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it or was afraid of losing it. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're afraid to lose, you're going to lose. You can take that to the bank. Why are you so fighting for somebody to see you in a certain way? You will never be able to, you will never accomplish and never experience God. It's what you're willing to lose. It's what he's willing to give. And what you're willing to lose and what he's willing to give supersedes what you're willing to lose. And that's why the majority of Christians never experienced God's best. Never experienced God's best. It goes on to say, but empty himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine uh, equality and his rightful di uh, dignity by assuming the form of a bond servant, by assuming of the, uh, the form of what? A bond servant. A bond servant is a free servant that don't want to be free. That's all I'm saying about it. It's a, a free slave. Out there. A bond servant is a slave that is free but don't want to be free. Free but I don't want to be free. I still want to serve you. I love you. Master. And being made in the likeness of man, he became completely human but without sin. Being fully God and full of man. I'm reading this out of the E, 
NXB version, the extended Bible. It says, Christ himself was like God in everything, who being in the form of God, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. Ooh. Wait a minute. So you and I, as he is, so am I in this world. So that means God has made you and I equal to Jesus. So Jesus was equal with God. He made us equal with Jesus and God because we have deity light on the inside of us residing. Greater is he that is in us. Deity. Notice what this, uh, the, this translation says. But he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. So watch this right here. So I got deity. As he is, so am I. And how many is taking the dimension of God that's in us and using it for personal gain? We're using it for our own benefit. And that's what's blocking God from able to have expression. Because what he's given you, you are not laying it down, allowing him to express his nature and deity through us for his benefit. For his benefit. Boy, that self thing is, that self thing is something else, isn't it? Oh, his dead name. It's deadly. That's the greatest enemy in the universe. Not Satan, not demons, our flesh, self. Wow. It says, uh, use for his own benefit or grasp, seize, hold to. But he gave up his place with God and made himself what? No, you, you, you see, you ain't going to do that. Ain't, ain't no way in the world. No, 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 no. No, I ain't no way in the world. I ain't going to make myself nothing. I'm striving to be something. Don't you understand why I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing? Why I'm working so hard and why I'm going to school and why I got this degree and that degree and that degree because I'm striving to be something. And everything you're striving to be is nothing but walls that you're building up against God. You're building up so God cannot have access to you. You say, well, preacher, is something wrong going to school? Stop. I did not say anything wrong going to school. They say anything wrong with it? No. Have you surrendered? Do God have access to you through your education? Have you surrendered it? Have you laid it at the feet of Jesus? And said, take everything that I have gained I lay it at your feet. I renounce and denounce all of my striving isn't that what Paul did in Philippians chapter 3, ladies and gentlemen? He said, I count all things done that I might win Christ. What, I'm ex what, what is being articulated here about Jesus, this is exactly what Paul did. What Jesus laid, his, laid everything down, that's what Paul did. And Jesus had access to Paul and was able to express himself to Paul. You remember the thorn in the flesh? He went and asked him three times, watch it right, three times, will you take this thorn away? But the decision came from heaven to give him the thorn. But you ask God to remove something that he already made a decision to give you. After the third time he spoke and said, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient. Are y'all here in the Holy Spirit? How many is in situation right now you've been praying about for years? God, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of this relationship. I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of this business. Lord, Dave, I'm getting abused. I'm getting abused. God, will, 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 will you do something? My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect. problem with you you don't want to be weak you want to be strong in the eyes of everybody and that's why I have no access to you 
And that's why you're constantly frustrated because you are not at peace nor at rest with my decisions I've made about your life. Are y'all hearing the Holy Spirit? Because this is religious demon. You're going to find scriptures to back up why you shouldn't be in the situation that you're in. You're going to find scripture to find the, 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 to fit your situation, why you shouldn't be. But yet you say God is sovereign. Yet you say God is your father. Yet you say he's omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. Yet you say you gave your life to him. Like he's not big enough to change your circumstances, situation, or mine. My God, what is wrong with us? We need to get saved. Biblically saved. Biblically say, if you give your, you have given your life to him, it belongs to him. He can do whatever he wants to do with you. God don't care. I'm telling you, listen to me. God don't care about nothing but you. Surrender everything to him. And he'll do whatever it takes. And he'll touch everything around us. And even us, he'll touch until we say, yes, Lord. Oh, he ain't going to make us because he's not going to go against the grain of your will. But he sure not to put the pressure on until you say, oh, I surrender. The sad thing about many of us wait too late. We wait too late before we say, yes. You say yes when you get 90 and you, ain't, you just barely can walk. What good is you to God now? And he tried to get you to say yes 50 years ago. Now we want to say yes on our deathbed. God help us. Help us. This is what the scripture says here. He emptied himself. He became like, took the form of a servant, slave bondservant and was born as a man in the likeness of humanity. Last verse here. We'll read this out of the uh, Living Bible. I don't think I even got all this scripture here today. The Living Bible. Philippians 2. Let me see if I got this. I think I do. In the Living are you getting something from the Lord tonight? Oh, I pray to God that this don't just be another message. I pray that you'll meditate on this because this has been the problem. Well, we hear all the message about dying to self. And Jesus is the pattern. But yet we want God to use us. We want the presence. We want the miracle. We want the signs. We want the wonders. But we refuse to empty ourselves. We refuse to lay everything down. I want you to think about it. I want you to stop and think. I want everybody to stop and think. I want you to stop and think and ask the Holy Spirit to take, to bring back to your remembrance everything that you have talked about about you. I. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. See Jesus living in this world. We don't want to really be a Christian. We say it with our mouth. It's not your life. It's his life being expressed through your life and my life by the degree I surrender. I give my life up. Giving your life up is giving you rights up. You no longer have a right to you. But then why are you still fighting? Nobody's going to talk to me this way. Nobody's going to treat me this way. My God, can you not see that you're protecting the devil? That's all the flesh is, is demonic. My flesh, your flesh is demonic. That's what um, the living Bible says. What verse we was reading? Verse 6. Six and seven, right? Look what it says. 
who through, who through, uh, through, excuse me, who though he was God, who though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God. He did not cling to what his rights as God. Though you are an apostle, why are you clinging clean to your rights as an apostle? Though you are a husband, why are you clinging to your rights as a husband? Though you are a wife, why are you clinging to your rights as a wife? Though you are a pastor, why are you clinging to your rights as a pastor? Though you are an employer, why are you clinging to your rights as an employer? Nobody can do anything to you. Wow. He says, this goes this. Who though he was God did not demand, did not what? Demand and, and cling to his rights as God did not demand. As a husband, to lay the cat, am I living in a demand? Am I demanding you to do anything? As a father, all my children's grown now. It's different when they're younger. I can demand. I still can demand you live in my house. I'm a little demand, but <laughs> but we have to start dealing with them different. They start dealing with them, not because they're chronological of age, but to deal with them from the perspective that they will become of age of here. Verse 7 says, But laid aside his mighty power and glory, Taking the, dis the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. Wow. Wow. This is the foundation for the miracle ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which really, it should be titled, The Mi Miracle Ministry of God. Because Jesus really didn't exist because he really emptied himself. The man Jesus existed. Bodily form. But it was God at work in the man. He laid everything down and laid everything aside. He laid what? Everything down and laid everything aside that which you refuse to lay down and lay aside would be the main thing that would block God from being able to express himself in your life and my life we just stuck up on ourselves we just love ourselves and we don't trust him we don't trust him God is bigger and greater than anyone and he cares about you and I affectionately and just because you don't understand what he's doing he would never tell you everything he's doing if he did you won't need to trust him you don't need to trust him that's one of the things statements that the Lord made on, on Sunday uh, concerning how this thing worked uh, concerning the self life the greatest enemy to self, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, to the self life, if it's understanding, you gotta understand. You cannot just step out and just obey God until you understand. I just don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand why you got me in this relationship. I just don't understand why this is happening to me. If you give me some understanding, then okay, I obey and submit. What? God's gonna bow down to you and I. Where's the trust? Jesus empty himself and the Bible said he learnt obedience by what the things that he suffered he learnt obedience through the things he suffered 
in your early years, obeying God through the things he suffered. Are you willing tonight to take this word, meditate on this word, Renew the, st the spirit, renew the spirit of your mind and make a decision that you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to reset you on the right path of life. And now you'll live a life of total submit commitment and surrender to him. That I'm not going to protect myself anymore. I'm going to stop protecting I'm going to stop trying to do anything. I'm going to empty myself. Holy Spirit, help me to empty myself completely. I am yours. Lord Jesus, today, tonight, I surrender my all. I thought I have done it, but tonight I see that I've been fighting you every step of the way. Every argument that I got in, I was fighting you and didn't even realize it. I had no clue I was fighting you. All the negative thoughts in my mind about other people, I didn't realize these negative thoughts was against you. But I'm thinking it's about those people because I was fighting the whole long to my belief system what I think should happen and should not happen I didn't trust you for the outcome I gave you my life but I kept taking it back will you grant me repentance tonight will you grant my heart to turn my mind to turn my thoughts to turn my ways to turn I have been a mess and they didn't realize it I've been fighting you all these years and this is why there's no progress in my life. And I've been doing all the fasting, all the prayer, and the fasting and prayer have not worked. I got a temporary release, and I'm right back in the same old mode because my mind have not changed. My thoughts have not changed. My belief system have not changed. But tonight, tonight I surrender it all by divine grace. Father, will you Give me the grace to yield, to surrender, to submit my will, my desires, my ways to you. Will you give me the grace to trust you with this life? Will you give me the grace not to pay any attention to this life? I'm asking you, Father, because I cannot do this. You see me. Look how long I've been saved. I've been making a mess of my life. Didn't even realize it. But tonight, I'm asking for mercy. We're in a season, in a time of mercy. This, Father, you know that this is Savannah, the month of mercy. Will you extend mercy towards me tonight? Will you extend mercy towards all of us tonight? And may you give us grace, Father to be able to totally empty ourselves as your son did and as your servant Paul did modeling it before us in Acts 120 on the day of Pentecost totally surrendered they all to you and you filled them with the Holy Spirit that's why we are not being filled because we refuse to empty ourselves and you can't feel a full man then grace us to be willing to empty so you can fill us with the Holy Spirit and power I ask this for me for everyone that is listening listening and those that will visit and listen later I ask it Father for this grace to begin to live in a conscious awareness of Jesus 24-7. And he become more real to us than Satan and demons and principalities and power. Jesus become more real to us than our spouses and our children, our bosses on our job. 
he's more real and we will live in the rest and quietness of Jesus thank you father for hearing from heaven and answering this prayer tonight in Jesus name amen oh we love him isn't he good to us He's good to us. He's merciful. He's gracious and he's kind to all of us. So, without clapping his hands, I want you to stay in a meditative state. I don't want you to praise and I want you to stay in a meditative state all, all tonight. So we got prayer in the morning. Let's see what the Lord said to us in the morning. But I want you to stay in a meditative state. Well, we were quietly, we've been ready to worship the Lord in our giving. Those of you that is with us by way of uh, uh, social media you can uh, worship the Lord in your tithes and offerings tonight by way of cash app, dollar sign panorama C, all caps panorama with a C at the end, or you can download the Giveify app, if you download the Giveify app you can give uh, worship the Lord in your tithes and offering by way of Panorama Christian Center Inc Panorama Christian Center Inc if the Spirit of the Living God lay upon your heart to be a blessing to me, if the Lord uh, ministered to you through me and you wanted to be a blessing, you can do that as the Spirit of the Lord leads you. You don't have to do anything. If you do, dollar sign, uh, cash app, dollar sign, EJ McKenzie. All caps, or Google Pay, EJMPCC at gmail.com, or Gilderfy, Emmanuel J. McKenzie Ministries. Listen, this Friday we'll be having a... Uh, 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 First Fruits, New Moon Celebration. That will be uh, on social media. And uh, so we won't be gathering together here. Uh, I may come down there. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Because uh, my laptop at the house there, uh, a brand new laptop. And this, I just, well, let me leave it alone. Not my will, but your will. He knew about the laptop before I bought it, didn't he? Amen. Let me just surrender to him. Amen. He's doing something with that. Amen. So, uh, thank God he's graced me to have more than one computer. So, uh, if I don't do it here, then I probably get on that other uh, computer. Uh, Friday, and I'm excited about uh, the month of June, the Lord spoke through Bishop Hammond uh, to stand in spirit of expectancy. Today is my day. Today is your day. Is today your day? It's not over with yet. 12 midnight will be over with. Is it possible that you can just walk right out of here, get to your car, look down, there's a bag with $7 million in it. <laughs> God can do anything. He's able. That's right. He's able. Amen. So I'm in a spirit of expectancy. And you got to be in the spirit, in the spirit of expectancy for yourself. I'm in the spirit of expectancy for myself. Amen. But I'm in the spirit of expectancy for all of us. I really like seeing people blessed. I really do. Uh, I get turned on when I hear testimonies what God has done for people. It's, uh, he just made me this way. And I'm grateful and thankful that he's made me this way. All right. Let's do this here. Let's lift up before the Lord. Father, we thank you for ministering unto us seed to sow bread for food and multiplying the seed that is sown and increasing the fruit of our righteousness. As we give, give back to us. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and run low. Allow men to give into our bosom. We give you glory, honor, and praise, O God, for the supernatural return. We're in the season of harvest. We're still in the season. And we thank you, Father, for the increase of the momentum of the manifestation demonstration of the harvest of Savannah being released in our lives and upon our lives. Let your blessings overtake us on the right hand and the left hand. Let there be testimonies, O oh God, out of this month of Savannah, what you have done and what you'll continue to do. You're extending mercy, you're extending grace, you're extending favor, and you're increasing the harvest in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And it is so manifesting now. All right. Well, it's been, it's been an honor to serve you tonight. And I pray that uh, you was challenged tonight. Amen. Challenged to the degree to change. Challenged to the degree that 
You want this thing. He's showing us how to get it. Are you willing to make the adjustments? Amen. Let us make the adjustments. As we make the adjustments and let us surrender and yield, let's see what he does. I believe, think about it. Ladies and I've been saved 41 years. And man, I've been, you know, uh, I can look at back and look at some religious activity, but I thought it was God. I thought it was spiritual. But he's merciful enough to begin to allow my eyes to become open, make an adjustment in my mind and my thinking because he loved me enough and patient enough with me to give me a second, a third, and a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth, and a seventh, and an eighth, and a ninth, and ten. <laughs> oh, God, thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. We are grateful for it. We are thankful for it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have prayer tomorrow, and 2.30 comes real quick uh, for me. So uh, uh, join us in the morning. The 6 a.m. prayer. Um, come online with this mindset, what the Lord spoke. I believe a presence will be released. I believe miracles will break out as you and I come in a conscious awareness of him, empty of ourselves so he can fill us. Isn't that a song, empty me so I can be filled? Y'all song is y'all singing people. Tasha Cobbs, what, what, is it, what does it say? Fill me up. Well, I got to be empty. Can't be filled. Can't feel what is filled. So may we be empty. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Let the rest of your night be blessed. Let your sleep be sweet. Let your dreams be induced by the Holy Spirit. And may you encounter him in your sleep state tonight. And may your fellowship with him be sweet in the dream state tonight. There ain't going to be no demonic activity tonight. No demonic activity. It's going to be sweet. And may you arise rejuvenated, refreshed, supernaturally by the Spirit of the living God. And may your day, all day tomorrow, be a day experiencing the kingdom dominion of our Lord and our Master on tomorrow. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Have an awesome night.